The year is 2005. You're in the back seat listening to your favorite corn CD while your mom drives you back home from Hot Topic, back when Hot Topic was like actually cool and not a monument to Funko Pops. After you get home from the mall and you're done browsing MySpace and VampireFreaks.com, one of your buddies hits up your landline and wants to tell you about this cool new action RPG called Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And apparently rumor has it that both Lacuna Coil and Ministry are both on the soundtrack, so naturally it piques your interest. So you decide to get it, but little did you know at the time that you just purchased the best goddamn game on the planet. I love this game so much. Despite all of its flaws, I still think that it's a flawless game, which I'm aware is a contradiction that doesn't really make much sense, but that's it, how I feel. This game is the epitome of early 2000s mall goth culture, and I mean that in the best ways and the worst ways possible. It's old, but it feels timeless. It's corny, but simultaneously badass enough that you kind of don't really care that it's corny. It has vampires, violence, funny plot lines, dark plot lines, anarchists, escorts, dancing in gothic cathedrals. The literal apocalypse, crime, a goth girl that becomes your sugar mommy, and no, I'm not making that up. You can seduce everyone, or you can kill everyone. You can start gang wars, or you could end gang wars. It's essentially if Grand Theft Auto was an RPG, and also simultaneously going through like a, a like MySpace emo phase, and come on, that is a one killer combination of stuff, man. When you boot up the game, you're immediately hit with one of the most catchy songs in all of video game history. Even if you've never heard it before, it will get stuck in your head after only five seconds, and it goes so hard. And not to mention that the main screen that the song plays on also has that like weird mouse traily effect thing that was really prominent in the early 2000s that I completely forgot about. So literally before the game even starts, it radiates just the most mwah, mwah, perfect, edgy, early 2000s vibes imaginable. But, I'm getting a little bit too excited. This is one of my favorite video games ever, but it is still decently complex in a lot of ways as are most immersive RPGs. I've been wanting to make a video talking about this game for nearly two years now, and even though I want to avoid making like too much gaming related content, this video and this game is totally an exception. If you love fun, edgy bullshit, I promise you everything I'm gonna be talking about is right up your alley. But before we jump into all the cool, funny, and weird aspects of this game, we need to take a step back and first learn about the world that this game takes place in. This game takes place in Los Angeles, and they're so committed to realism that there's even random gang violence that takes place, just like real LA. There's a few different noteworthy places you can visit, like Santa Monica, Downtown, Hollywood, and Chinatown, where it's gonna get a little racist, but we're gonna talk about that later, it's a whole thing. Within all these locations, there's so many different cool places you could go to, from strip clubs to haunted hotels. There's also regular sewers, sewers with dead people in it, cemeteries, sketchy porn shops, sketchy porn shooting locations, crack houses, gamer cafes, regular cafes, the absolute sketchiest tattoo parlor I've ever seen, absolutely none of this is up to code, and my personal favorite, multiple different goth clubs that you can seduce patrons in and also have a dance party. If you're not buying this game already, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh yeah, and that long list of locations that I gave, by the way, that's only like 8% of the places you can go. It's insane. Don't worry, by the way, I'm not gonna spoil the whole game for you. That's not what I'm about. I purposefully wrote this video so that if you decide to watch the entire thing, it won't spoil the game for you. It'll just make you more excited to actually play the game yourself. Some of the different aspects of this game might sound kind of boring at first, but trust me, once you get just a little bit below the surface, it's all so extremely cool and I'm really overly passionate about it. I don't know if you could tell. So let's discuss the different clans of vampires that you can play as in this game. But if we're gonna be talking about mildly attractive corpses, I should probably look the part a little bit more, so there we go. That was really uh, excessive and not necessary, I just wanted an excuse to be as extra as possible. Let's talk about the vampires now. There are seven different types of clans that you could play as in this game, and the different clans are essentially just the different breeds of vampire. Such clans include gangrels, who are nomads who can shapeshift into beastly forms. Also, the male variant of gangrels looks like he'd be a killer new metal vocalist, and I just I get a huge kick out of that, if I'm being honest. There's the Bruja, or the Bruja, if you're German. They're basically just a bunch of anarchists who, like, fight for social change with, like, weapons instead of, like, putting something on your front lawn or 
posting an infographic on an Instagram or whatever people are doing to pretend to care about social issues now. Basically, they're forward thinkers, but they're also very quick to violence and also kind of dicks about it, aka the only way that works. There's Malkavians who are just absolute lunatics. I hit the green screen. Their dialogue is either like cryptic riddles or funny insults, and I love them so much. Sometimes you can also drive people insane just by talking to them, or you could just blatantly gaslight them to bend them to your will, which is such a cool power. Since I went with Malkavian during my playthrough, I was able to have a whole bunch of unique dialogue options, like really unique dialogue options. Like I could talk to things and people that I didn't really think was possible. There's the Tremere who are blood mages. How cool is that? They can boil people's blood, causing them to explode from the inside out, or they could force their enemies to vomit up a whole bunch of blood. And goddamn, that is like one of the most badass things ever. There's the Torador or Theodore or something, I don't know. They're basically just upper middle class people who like want to be a painter or an actress or something. But just pick like the vampires from Twilight. It's essentially them, to my understanding, I'm pretty sure. There's the Ventru, and they're essentially just all the wealthy politicians and CEOs of vampires. So basically, these guys suck, no pun intended. They are extremely posh, which forces them to not be able to drink, like, lower class blood, otherwise they throw up. So basically, just picture if any wealthy Republican was a vampire. There you go, that's this clan. And one of the coolest clans is the Nosferatu clan. This particular strain of vampirism distorts your appearance and makes you hideous, forcing you to have to stick to the shadows. And also your seduction is stuck at zero, which means that no one's ever gonna wanna bang you, which is kinda tragic. Basically, picking this clan is how you play this game on hard mode, essentially. You'd have to sneak everywhere all the time, also you can't talk your way out of anything, and also you're ugly, and also everyone hates you for no real reason. I feel bad for these guys, I'm not gonna lie. Each vampire clan has their own unique set of skills and abilities that you can level up as you progress throughout the game, and it also allows for some replayability. If you wanna play as a different clan, it changes up the entire experience, which is really cool. Once you pick whichever class you vibe with the most, then the game finally starts with the very moment you are turned into a vampire, and it honestly has aged really poorly. <laughs> so basically the general premise of this game is you're a vampire now, you're all on your own, you have to do whatever this my daddy's a lawyer Republican looking ass dude says because he's in charge and just try and not die again. All the missions and stuff that they make you do in this game is so incredibly cool and fun, but if I'm being honest, there's still more mechanics that I want to gush over real quick because I think I it just makes me so excited. One of my favorite aspects of this game that sounds really boring on the surface but is actually really cool is the armor. All of the vampire variants in this game have their own unique armor that you unlock as you progress, and a lot of them are mostly just kind of coolish outfits. Nothing too crazy, but as you start feeling a little bit more badass while you play, your character starts to reflect that badassness, and I think that that's kind of cool. But Nosferatu's armor is, I'm not even joking, just like BDSM gear. <laughs> and the heavier the armor type, the kinkier the outfit. And since Malkavians are a little nonsensical, their armor also reflects that. The heaviest armor type for the Malkavian male is, and I'm not even joking, a pimp outfit. I love this game so much. There's a lot of cool friends that you meet along the way in this game, and a lot of them are actually really enjoyable to speak with. There's Fat Larry, who's one of the shopkeepers in this game, and by shopkeepers, I mean you can buy a whole bunch of, like, guns from the back of his truck. I love him, he's awesome. There's also Smiling Jack, who's voiced by the wonderful John DiMaggio. There's also multiple really cool, really attractive, hot, vampired women that you can meet and flirt with sometimes, and one of which is voiced by Grey, who voiced, like, 90% of my childhood which is really cool. There's also a surprising amount of like hacking and navigating the computers within this world as well and I think it adds an extra layer of complexity. In order to navigate the computers in this game you actually have to like type things out and like press control and enter and actually do real typing stuff which I know is a weird thing to gush about but it's really cool that the game doesn't just spoon feed the information to you. You actually have to type and search around to get the info that you need. I feel like genuine typing mechanics like this don't really exist much nowadays because game developers kind of want to like hold your hand, which I appreciate, but is also kind of annoying. Even in recent ARPGs that have like a whole lot of computer stuff in it, like Cyberpunk 2077, they still didn't really allow you to like type around and search stuff out. They made it as simple and streamlined and handholdy as possible. And it's kind of funny that a 2004 game managed to like navigate computers in a better, more realistic way than a futuristic computer themed 
future tech game. I like, I don't know, that's just funny to me. I really think that more video games should incorporate typing into its design a little bit more. Just the simple touch of having a one-to-one -one ratio of real life input versus in-game output really goes a long way in terms of like immersion. To put it more simply, cause I kind of worded it weird, we do kind of have to settle with moving a mouse or pressing a button to simulate shooting a gun or reloading a weapon. But with typing, you just type. Your actions in real life are 100% completely identical to what your character is doing and you, there isn't like a whole thin facade of you being an elite soldier and all you're doing is clicking a mouse. Navigating computers in this way feels way more intimate and personal and I love that it's utilized really well in this game and also in some other games like Stories Untold and it's just a little disappointing to not see it be utilized in many other spaces since it works really well. Anyways, I got off track for a second there. Let's talk about the missions. This game has some genuinely fantastic missions. No garbage trailing missions where the game yells at you if you get too close or if you get too far away. None of that, just some solid, good, horror RPG fun goodness. Three of my favorite missions are A Bounty for the Hunter, Hot Stripper Assassin Action, and Snuff is Enough. In this mission, you have to find a missing bounty hunter from your local bail bonds place. One of the leads you end up finding points you in the direction of a prosthetic limb store, and you kind of end up piecing together that the owner is a psychopath who has a fetish for amputation. And part of that fetish includes kidnapping people, amputating their limbs, and then selling their amputated limbs as prosthetic limbs. Jesus Christ. And just to add, by the way, this mission is one of the very first missions in the game. This is just to get your toes wet to the world, essentially. And it only gets more insane from there. In the mission Hot Stripper Assassin Action, and yes, by the way, the exclamation point is a part of the official title. In this mission, one of your stripper vampire friends named Velvet has been seeing a lot of vampire hunters in the area lately, and needless to say that that is not a good thing. One of the vampire hunters in question goes by the name of Chastity and works at the peep show in the basement of a local porn shop. Her being alive puts all vampires at risk, so you gotta find a way to kill her without the authorities finding out. It's a really tricky mission because her job is public, people are constantly watching her, but you have to try and kill her in a way that like no one can see. I didn't really have the proper lock picking skills necessary for this mission, so I got soft locked a little bit and had to no clip and then beat her to death with the sledgehammer while floating around the air. But honestly, getting soft locked and having to cheat kind of added to the fun because it's already kind of goofy mission to begin with, so to end it with this. Hey. Come on, get her, get her. Get her, get her, get her. Oh my God, she's doing a good job. Almost there, almost there. I am somehow missing. There we go. Just kind of felt fitting a little bit. I liked it, it was a good end to the mission. And the last mission we're gonna be talking about is Snuff is Enough. And this mission is actually kind of fucked up. Pretty much all the missions in this game touch on dark subjects, but the game as a whole manages to maintain a fun, carefree, tongue in cheek nature to it. Even if the subject matter to a mission is kind of horrible, it's never really meant to be taken super seriously. But for this mission in particular, the whole fun mood surrounding everything just kind of fades away and it gets a little bit more serious and sexual and kind of a little scary at times. For this mission, you investigate rumors of a snuff tape where every single person that watches it ends up dying. And if that's not bad enough, the tape itself actually shows a whole bunch of people being killed by real demonic creatures. Every single person that you end up talking to to try and find more information on the tape dies. But throughout your journey, you end up finding a porn shooting location that has a secret snuff shooting location underneath it. And from there, that leads you to a house that's entirely made of flesh that's crawling with a whole bunch of the demons that were in the snuff tape, only to go to the basement of the flesh house and then kill the head demon who's the one actually making the tape. It's fucking crazy. It is definitely one of the most fucked up missions in this game, but it is also one of the more compelling ones as well. I'm giving you the shortened version of all these missions, but if you want to see more, definitely stick around for the second half of this video where I actually play these missions because it's fantastic. And keep in mind, by the way, these are only my favorite three missions. This is just barely scratching the surface. There are so many more missions that take you to crazier places and you meet crazier people. Like we're really only just barely getting started. But as with any game, it has its fair share of problems. So let's talk about that. There's one major issue with the game that I've neglected to point out so far, uh, and that's that the game just 
doesn't run anymore. And I mean that literally, by the way. If you download this game off of Steam right now and hit play, I can guarantee it will not run. Due to the game being very old and not made for modern hardware, if you're playing on any computer besides this one, you're shit out of luck. The only way to make the game run on any modern computer is to download the unofficial patch that's made by the community surrounding the game. It's safe, it works fantastic, it, it honestly improves the game in a billion different ways, but it is still an additional step to play a game that you feel like you should just be able to just play it normally, but it's just not maintained at all. There are other issues with the game as well. I mean, it's damn near 20 years old, so naturally it's not gonna be working perfectly. There's a lot of weird sound leveling issues and there's no way to like fix it in the settings. You just have to turn on subtitles and pay attention. Sometimes people just pop in and out of place and it's a like a borderline unintended jump scare sometimes. Oh. Guess that person didn't want to be here. Some of the textures are pretty dated, some of the reflections get stuck, and some of the AI of the NPCs kind of end up being a little bit janky and old. Yeah, real casual that was. <laughs> but in my opinion, none of these issues are really that big of a deal. I mean, Skyrim also has pretty much all these issues and also game breaking crashes. So if you really compare it, I think Vampire actually runs better than modern Skyrim. In my opinion, frankly, I think a lot of the bugs actually add to the charm of this game, but it is in no way a technological masterpiece. But speaking of masterpieces, you know what is a masterpiece? <laughs> The original soundtrack for this game was made by Rick Schaefer, and it is remarkably fantastic. Even if you don't end up playing the game, I, I cannot recommend the soundtrack enough. You should absolutely listen to it. It blends so well with the mood of the game while you're playing that it can actually be kind of easy to overlook just because it, it matches so well. Which is why after I finished the game and I decided to listen to the soundtrack on my own time and give it my full attention, I was blown away by just how good the songs were and I just kind of didn't notice while playing. Here's a list of my favorite songs and why I like them so much. It's so good. And believe it or not, a lot of the music that was composed for this game ended up not even making it onto the soundtrack but was released as its own standalone album in 2021. That is damn near 20 years after the game originally came out and you know what? It's fucking awesome. It's borderline better than the original in my opinion. It even includes Fat Larry's theme song which is a song no one even knew existed until just like a year ago. Ironically enough, for a game about vampires and immortality, pretty much everything about this game refuses to die. From the soundtrack to the fans making mods and unofficial patches keeping the game alive. And even the game's legacy refuses to die. It's being kept alive by weird people making video essays that everyone has probably stopped watching by now. All of these things are still thriving and still keeping the game alive all these years later, and I find that so cool. Fun fact about this game, by the way, is when it came out, it was a complete and utter failure. It launched in competition to a few indie titles such as Half-Life 2, Halo 2, and Snake Eater. And even though I love this game a whole lot, I think we can all agree that if that's the competition, you're, you're fucked, dude. Like, that's, that's impossible. So despite this game being dead on arrival upon its release, meaning it was never even alive to begin with, this game about vampires refuses to die even still. Do you see why I'm so passionate about all this? How cool and symbolic is that? I, I love it. Also, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, the song's soundtrack also features some noteworthy artists as well. This album by Lacuna Coil is actually featured quite prominently within the in-game universe. What I'm about to say kind of feels out of left field, but trust me. Do you remember watching The Matrix for the very first time and Neo puts on his sunglasses and freeze frames towards the camera as Rage Against the Machine starts playing. And as you're sitting there watching it for the first time, it is both simultaneously corny and also the most badass early 2000s thing you've, your brain has ever seen. That exact feeling can be found at the very end of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. When the credits start to roll and Lacuna Coil's Swamp starts playing, oh my god. God, it is so good. Not only is Swamped a legitimately fantastic song, but it just feels like the perfect send off to such a wonderful game. Maybe this is a really dorky thing to geek out over, but this is a video essay. Every single thing I've talked about has been geeky so far, so I'm just gonna keep going. I don't know about you, but I love stuff like Boundary Break where you get to like take a peek behind the curtain and see like 
how the game works behind the scenes. Doing stuff like no clipping and using console commands can kind of end up breaking the immersion a little bit, but it's also really interesting from like a game developing standpoint. So I decided to make a little mini boundary break episode by myself for this game on my own. So fuck it, here it is. Welcome to another episode of Tyler geeking out of, over shit that I don't think anyone on earth cares about. If you go on a no clip downtown, you really want to like explore. You want to like go up vertically, but if you see the little icon in the center, it actually like shows distance and the distance stops right here. And if you go above this point, uh oh, there goes the entire upper half of the city, including this E sign, which is kind of a bummer because I want to explore all this, this cool shit, but you can. If you just go right up here and you just keep going, there reaches a point where boop, there we go. Now we're in the sky. Whoa! And now you can fly around in like the weird skybox. There's the Empire Hotel. That's so cool. And if you go out of it, <laughs> here's the sewer. It's stored way above the sky instead of actually like underneath, which is pretty cool. If you look hard, you can actually see the seam between like the real actual ground and the skybox. It's a little hard, but yeah. Oh wow, look at her. Look at her go, running her little heart out. The masquerade's like, don't do anything that'll, you know, alert people to the existence of vampires. But by all means, you know, if you want to float around in the sky, that's fine. Oh, this is the, the back alleys when they get loaded in. Oh, this is so cool! What? There's just a random homeless guy just standing in this area that you can never access? That's kind of cool. Oh, look at this low poly shit. And the floating- Oh, this is so neat! Oh, I get the biggest kick out of this. There's just a, a cop car, just right here. That's so cool! Let's go up. There it is. That's so cool that just like, just the roofs are rendered differently. Oh, that's so neat. As I briefly mentioned earlier in the video, there is a little bit of racism in the game that uh, is really disappointing and genuinely did not need to be there. It's not explicitly racist with ill intent, but it does briefly on occasion resort to some me love you long time type humor that was pretty prevalent in the early 2000s. Despite all the writing and dialogue of this game to be quite good in my opinion, once you get to Chinatown for the first time, you will occasionally get some dialogue options that feel like they were written from someone like Hank Schrader from Breaking Bad. From a spaghetti horror to a kung fu film. What is this, a double feature? <laughs> Am I right, Gomi? Like, it's very clearly not meant to be mean. It's meant to be funny, but it just like, it just kind of kills the mood a little bit. The creators and writers of this game are all outspoken against hateful ideologies, so I'm willing to bet that some of their questionable decisions are more so just a product of their time and not them being shitty people. Which does not discredit the legitimate criticisms that everyone, including myself, have with some of the dialogue in this game, but I still think it's worth taking into consideration. But all flaws aside, I think we should talk about the future of the franchise because it is a roller coaster. So first off, good news, there is a sequel to this game that is currently in development. Yay! It's the same basic premise of you're a vampire now, everything's fucked up, and there's a bunch of characters and dynamics you gotta navigate. Only now it takes place in Seattle, and the graphics aren't 20 years old. The gameplay is said to take a lot of notes from Dishonored, which I personally think is a brilliant idea. I think that the game mechanics of Dishonored would actually pair really well with this vampire universe. And they got the original writer from Bloodlines 1, and the original composer, which as we've already discussed, I am so on board with. It's either going to be amazing or the biggest letdown since Cyberpunk 2077 dropped the ball at launch. I want this game to be great. I am not at all rooting for the downfall of this game, but it is a little bit hard to remain optimistic when this game is supposed to come out in 2020. That didn't happen. But hey, game development is extremely hard and extremely time consuming, so a game getting delayed a few years is actually not that crazy, even though the gamer community acts like it's 9-11 every time it happens for some reason. But it's a little messier than that because they originally delayed the game a year and then completely switched development teams halfway through its completion. And a lot of the original Bloodlines team that made the original game that are currently working on this one either got fired without explanation or quit. You do not have to be a game developer to look at this extremely messy timeline 
and be worried about the end result of the game because this is not looking good. As I was writing the script to this video, a new development came out after two years of radio silence and the game should most likely be coming out either really late this year or early 2024, maybe. But like, I don't, fingers crossed, I guess. I want the game to be good, but looking at this timeline, I'm sure as hell not gonna get the pre-order. I'm gonna wait and see how it turns out first before I put my money on the table. I don't think all hope is lost, however, there are plenty of other games that had similar development issues that ended up creating stuff like the Need for Speed franchise or the Halo franchise. So I'm not writing it off just yet, but I am scared, however, but I am trying to remain hopeful for the future of this franchise. Making things is extremely hard and extremely time consuming, even if it doesn't really look like it on the surface. And the hardest, most time consuming thing to make is a video game. And one of the hardest types of video games to make is a good looking gigantic action RPG, which is what Bloodlines 2 is trying to do. So I don't know, maybe we should cut them some slack. And just to illustrate how much work goes into making games like this, if you look at the movie Avengers Endgame, the credits roll for a whole entire 10 minutes. Just thousands of names, just scrolling endlessly for 10 whole complete minutes on one of the most gigantic, collaborative, complex CGI extravaganza movies of like the last 10 years. Regardless of your opinion, Opinion on Marvel or anything like that, this is not to turn your nose up at. This is incredibly impressive. All right, now guess how long Cyberpunk 2077's credits are? 40 minutes. All the people that worked on one of the most biggest movies to ever come out ever is only a fourth of this game. That's, that's fucking crazy. That's not even a development team anymore. That's a city. That's fu that's crazy. Even though people complain and even though certain aspects of its development cycle are not looking too great, I am still extremely excited for what new stuff Bloodlines has to offer and hopefully you are too. Anyways, video essays are for nerds and let's plays are for chads. The main course of this video is done, so now it's time for some dessert. So here is a giant compilation of all my favorite moments I had while playing the game. I hope you enjoy. So we're gonna be starting from scratch. We're gonna be building the character together and you guys are gonna help me with that. They're insane and I'm gonna be a lady. Now, what should my history be? I am immediately drawn to ex-gymnast stripper. My history is a homosexual. It's a history, so it's a past, so I was gay. Now I'm fine. Wait, fine, no, that's, I worded that horribly. Oh God, <laughs> I'm gonna do ex-gymnast stripper. Fuck, do I want to be, do I want to be able to gaslight people more or do I want to be really sexy? That's a, that's a tough question. I think we're good. I think we're good to start. Lacuna coil poster, let's go. Fuck. Within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Bitch, please, Many top text, bottom to text, that's permission. what that needed. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs Oh, us. that one's fucked up. Oh my, did you see that one? Let Holy shit. Christy, she needs a skincare routine. Must, I have decided that <sighs> this is bullshit. Yeah, this cutscene's taking too long. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, Why is he so short? By the name the of thing is right here, the push he thing. He will provide the details of your He's labor. like four foot tall. Penis enlargement! Yeah, watch the girls come running. Move yourself or I'll tear a hole in your shadow. Holy shit. That's a cool sentence. I love that they didn't bother with stairs. It's a ramp. Like, respectfully, like, wheelchair accessibility is awesome. One, this is way too fucking steep. Two, it's to the beach. This is sand. I don't think that that would work. But I mean, props for trying? Yeah. Oh, we could suck. I mean, he already got it out. <laughs> hey, all right. Whoa, these are not put on here properly. And I like that it's a GIF. She's the woman around here. Power cool. Player. Nice looking bro for a dead chick, but cool. uh, personality like stone. I'm into all of that. Hold on, I thought that was Smash Mouth. What <gasps> do we have here? Another scrumptious I'm gonna smoke a blunt with this bitch. By the way, just a heads up, um, if you look like this, um, we let's get married immediately. Yeah, they're coming around me so we can all dance together, except for the grudge bitch who's just kind of standing there. Yeah, never mind, I take back what I said about you, all right. Oh, they're all, oh my god, I am the life of the fucking party. Let she who is without sin pass the fierce tone. Go ahead and mock This bitch is religious. In return, you'll have to help me remove a particularly burdensome spirit from a property I'm looking to invest in. 
Rumor is that a personal item of a ghost may be used to draw it out or excise it Fuck. from its haunt. While I don't put a lot of stock in hearsay, it's my last option. We're literal so I want vampires. You to go to the what Ocean House Hotel, find an item of the spirits, and bring it back. Wait, no, Nosferatu, absolutely real, but like, ghosts? C come on. All right, spooky house. <laughs> Spooky house. Oh, what is that? What is that noise? Hello? Can I come in? Oh, good. There's light. Light up. Fuck. That one was louder. This is awesome. Hey, is there anything in the drawers? Okay, then I'm getting the fuck out of this fucking room. Okay. You know what? Let's go this way. This is fine. Hey! Don't do that. Child's severed head found in a laundry room. Cool. Oh! 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 Cool. You know, what? Well, fun fact, by the way, I actually, when I was a child, I did a family drawing, and I, I feel it's so fucked up. I drew my dad angry and my mom sad. I don't know why I brought that up, that's just kind of fucked up. Okay, um... Oh. Come on! Yeah! This is fine. Where? Oh, oh shit, this is fine. Just, just, just jump. <sighs> it's so dark in here. I love it. I love not being able to see. <gasps> this is what we had to re retrieve. Yay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. And we did it. Are we done? Can I not be in the scary house? I'm not scared. That's how walking works. Yeah, look at that. Both feet on the floor, for, that's for sure. All right, we did it. We good? We good? Holy fuck. Oh shit! Come on, oh, no, let me crouch, let me crouch and hide. Oh my god, wow, that was fucked up. He didn't do anything. You are not even holding your shotgun properly. You know nothing of firearm safety. All right, baseball bat time. Yeah, come and get me. Just come, just come over. Don't, oh, come on, fellas. They lost interest. <laughs> Hold on. Shit. Don't shoot me. Please. No. Fuck. I was so close. Come on. Yeah. Reload your gun. <sighs> oh my god. Okay. Yes. It was a setup. Oh. I know we've had our differences, but you have to trust me. Okay. Reese tried to have you killed. I had to lock myself in the bathroom because now she's got a gun and please, you have to help me. Sir, you're just going back to cooking? Criminal violence? What? Dude, I didn't know. I was just, I was checking on you, man. God, what are you, the police are coming? No, like, do I? Come on, just go. Fuck. Oh, man. Oh, man, please. Please. What do you mean I can't go in? Oh no. On private property. I apologize. You vacate the premises immediately, or I'm afraid I'll be forced to radio this in. Um, come on, let's have some fun. Why don't you put me in those handcuffs? Huh. Well, Missy, that's just a natural response that people have to someone in my kind of position. Huh? <laughs> the risk, the prestige, the authority. It's a tough job. That's true. Somebody's got to do it. That's true. The only pig I respect is this one. Uh, I'll be your donut shop. Whisper your order in my ear. Oh! 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 We're feeding! Oh my god, look at him. He's in ecstasy right now. And let's get that gallery key. Look at, look at his tits. <laughs> I'm about to rid the night of this deviant, backstabbing whore. Okay. Do you realize that despite her condition, she still fornicates with kind, no less? So you're saying there's a chance. So, so unclean. Yes. You're one to talk, dear sister. 
Or should I say Daddy's little girl? Oh, Do you know good. Just how depraved the Baron of Santa Monica can be? Shut up, Jeanette. You'd um. love the world to think you're a saint. When you thought I was asleep, I used to hear Father come in at night. Incest subplot. He loved you in your ear before oh, he don't okay. finish that sentence or you're dead. Yeah. But he didn't have to force you. You oh, went limp and became right. his plaything. Okay. Did you didn't hear it? Night after night? All righty. Over the years, it all became too much for him. I think she broke his heart, so he killed himself right in our room. Oh, killed that's himself. not cool. Therese. You placed his finger on the trigger once you blew his mind all over the silly clown wallpaper. Jesus. Right after he found me in your bed and thought I was you. Oh my he was god! Always angry at you. You drove him to drink. When he died, Ladies, he was in let's... as I recall, he died with a smile on his face. Fucked. Oh, hello. Look who hey, man. finally made it. Thought you'd never find me, did you, sweetheart? I was looking for you? I like your septum. That's awesome. It really distracts from the, you know, everything. So let me see if it's on the map. I know there's a second place that we can't do. Whoa, that is not supposed to do that. Where, not today. What? What? Did your walking animation have like two frames? What was that? Did I imagine that? Ah, my insides. It hurts so bad. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you hang out with me, sometimes that happens. Sex. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Scary. Wow. Oh, well. Animorphs. That was so Your sick. Hello, camera, the fuck. Oh. Damn. Boys, I think we could all use a little entertainment. I don't like the vibe. His in the shoe is going through my boob. We'll get wet. Who cares about the fourth wall break the boob thing? That's crazy. Hey man, what's up? Snack cake? What are you doing here? That's I mean, me. I gotta admit, I'm a little flattered if you're stalking me, but uh, <laughs> anyhow, uh, you see where your little security muffins ended up? Nice. Night shift lobby sergeant. That's huh? pretty good. <laughs> hey, you stick with me, because I'm going straight to the top, baby. Can we do a run where we just be, like, get married to this man? <laughs> I feel like that'd be fun. Give the Anarch community my regards. I'll pass it along to my viewers at home. Vote Robert Thorne, not a murderous ch Oh, okay. <laughs> Mysteries of the Ninth Circle. You got something in your throat. Are those piercings on his head? Is that what that is? Come on. Come on. Oh, oh. It got the fucking, what's it called? Harry Potter game ass looking thing? That was fun. Koala ears, lazy eye hammocks, and dwarf saddle right here. Baby to cut me sick, sign sealing certified. Wow. I want a dwarf oh, saddle. This, turtle, this week only. God, I love his dialogue. Yo, 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 I got dinosaur eggs. We don't know what kind. Buy them in hatch. Yo, new clothing. Okay. It acts as armor. Okay. I know what I'm doing. I'm buying that. Clothing. Oh. <gasps> Oh my god. This is such a good game. <laughs> oh, oh, shh. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love this game. It's so fucking stupid, but it's so much fun. Oh, I could talk to you. Hello. Who the hell are you? Ah, uh, oh my god, Da Vinci. Come, I'm coming. I love the dialogue. I leave this to whoever may find it. The ship is cursed. May it sink to the crushing depths of Davy Jones' locker before th Cool, he's a bottom. Man, this game has great vibes. And let's kill you real quick. The crowd cheered. Oh, this game is delightful. Damn. Lightning McQueen went down the alt-right pipeline. You hate to see it. Gentlemen. Oh, fuck. He's peeing. Oh, fuck. He's not no longer peeing. Pissing all by yourself, handsome? <laughs> For real, though. You pissed loud as fuck. And I think that that's pretty- Oh, shit. Ladies' bathroom. 
Oh, women aren't allowed to use the restroom in this game either. Oh my god, just like the last video. Women, men. Uh, women are not allowed to use the restroom. Good. Oh! No one. You fingered nines. Whoa! So Holy <laughs> shit! I didn't know I could do that in this game. I like your technique, dude. That's really cool. Can you believe this? They got Shin. It's my favorite magazine. You can buy a gun and a sledgehammer from the guy at the convenience store. That is amazing. You ever think like all the world is one big video game and we are all characters in it? Whoa, that's like deep, man. <laughs> New clothing over $400. That doesn't make any goddamn sense, but I am buying it. All right, let's change outfits, I guess. Say goodbye to this. Oh my god. I'm a fucking pig? Precinct 69. This is a good adult store. Let's go. This gives off murder vibes. Let's go in. Hello, I'm here to get murdered, maybe? Um, what's up? Hey, uh, hot pants. Ah, the, the prince of porn. Whoa, you could buy a baton and estrogen. Look at that. Downtown. What a beautiful JPEG. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's wavy. It's like that one scene in a Toy Story where it's just like, hey, you guys, it's me, Buzz. It's called Devil Spawn Flesh Feast. Cool. I don't know if I want that. All right, gamers, let's get ready to game. There's some noobs in here. That's a cool modern reference that I'm sure will never age poorly. <gasps> this one. Oh good, scary music! Whoa! Whoa! This is really fucked up, man. Oh wow. Uh-oh. He's eating his ass. There's the tape. Oh. This is messed up, dude. Oh! Yep, goodbye. I just realized that these are beds and chairs made of flesh. That is so cool and disgusting. I'm in a little flesh house, but we can make it a flesh home. Yeah. Fuck! Shit! God damn! What are you? Oh! Okay. There's a little root of flesh. That is such a revolting texture. God, this game is great. They even fucking fleshified the bathroom. <laughs> Love the commitment to interior design. I like to discuss business face to face. Then face me, Are you Jesus. Sure, boss? Oh. You don't want my image in your subconscious. It's the stuff nightmares are made of. You probably won't even want to talk to me anyways. I'm really ugly. Nightmares are all I got. Shut up. Careful what you wish for. You just might get it. <laughs> you look like a Nosferatu. I understand. Behind you, boss. Boo. You look better than literally every other Nosferatu I've run into. <laughs> I love it when there's new places to explore. Oh, this is cool. Welcome to Sang's Herbal Remedies. I am Sang. How may I assist you? I like your eye patch. Um, Are you with uh, immigration? Jesus. Uh, I don't think so. Are you police? No, but I do enjoy harassing people. Hold on, please. These are good remedies for many problems. No credit cards. Oh, gimme. Hello. Sorry. Lu Fang no speak English. When he drunk? It's a good one, man. Oh. He's gotta piss again. <laughs> Alcohol does that, I get it. She was kidnapped by the Tong. Damn. By the gang. I hate Tongs. I do not. Alright, losers. With your appearing and disappearing cards. Give me the girl! <laughs> I'll leave you be. Wait, who, who is this tall? This, I mean, that's like easier for you, I guess, but uh, whatever. I've come to free you. What? Yeah, who are you? 
You're not with the tongue. I'm no toothless tongue. Didn't I just say that? You may not be with the tongue, but you seem to be as smart as they are. All right, bitch. I'm trying to help you. Jesus fucking Christ. Your tongue needs a tuning. Yeah, I'm Kiki. Who the hell are you? The tongue welcoming committee? I bring you freedom's key. Oh, I'm so impressed. What? Like you want me to thank you or something? In your dreams, bitch. Let's leave. That's an original idea. Oh Man, my god. That must really be hurting for good help. Lead the way, hero. Oh. What are you doing? Why are you just running away from me? Are you not aware that we're fighting right now? <laughs> you instigated this. My guy. I don't understand. Wow, that was broken as all hell. Yeah, I just double checked. No target was off that whole time. So I know I wasn't accidentally cheat. He just got lost. All right. <laughs> No, I mean, heard of him. Oh, this sucks. There we go. There we go. This is the only way I can make progress. Oh my God, this is so broken. There we go. Wow. Oh, she's back to normal. Back to dancing, yep. <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna entail. I'm frightened, let's go. You're, you're calling me a monster? Oh, right in the mid-air, asshole. Fuck. Alright. Fuck. Fuck, no, I was about to heal. Damn. What? Why, you fucker. Oh my god, he's so close. Oh my god, he's so close. Fuck. Come on, get him! Get his ass! <gasps> oh, that was really unceremonious because there's a wall there. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Oh! Your mouth didn't even open, you loser. Ah, uh, can't get me now, idiot. Whoa, you can throw dead bodies? That's cool. Uh huh. Uh huh, idiot. Uh huh, idiot. Yeah, real good throw. Cool. <laughs> what a fun boss. Hello. Oh, am I ever glad you're safe, Cinnamon Bun? I was. You are repulsiveness incarnate. Oh, I don't want to be mean to the guy. I'm gonna call him a security stud. To that, I propose an alliance with the Anarchs. Oh shit! Together, we kindred shall drive out these foreigners once oh, and for oh, all. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh, I was on board for half a second until the racism started. No, we're not doing that. The Kuei Jin would eradicate us all. Oh my God, he is a Republican. All right, if I'm being watched, let's put that to the test. Oh, okay, I am in fact being watched. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh my Christ. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey, it's a dead end over there. Hey guys, don't go that way. Oh wow, there's a lot of you. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me, everyone. Hey guys, pardon me. I am so sorry to intrude. Hey, if you guys could maybe scooch over a little bit, that'd be really beneficial. All right, thanks. What happened to the walls? Walking with this looks so goddamn ridiculous. Farewell, vampire. Bye! Thank you for the fun game. Oh. This was fun. Oh, I'm kind of, I'm sad it's over. Jesus Christ, this video took forever. Did this video need to be this long? 
No. Is anyone even still watching until the end? Probably not, but I refuse to water down my passion and I'm proud of what I've made. And if you're watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider doing these things. If there's anything that you thought was really cool, please feel free to geek out over it in the comments. I will read it and I do want to hear about it. Also, if you wanted to share this video on Reddit or something, I feel like folks over there might really enjoy really long, overly passionate video essays. So if you want to upload it over there, you totally can. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one and uh, love you. See you next time.